Hi everybody, it's Stacy with Stacy So and So. If this is your first time here, really glad you found me. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back today. I'm really glad you're here. Uh, today we are going to be doing another back to school sew along or tutorial. We're going to be covering uh, notebooks and binders. So I made a set last night. Um, I wanted to film this yesterday, but storms popped up. In fact, we're having storms right now, so if you can hear the thunder and lightning, I apologize. So I made a set last night. Um, these are for my cousin Stephanie's little, uh, two daughters. Aubriana is 10 and is going to be heading back to school next week. So this is actually her covered, it's a spiral bound notebook. So we're going to talk about two different ways to cover them. This one you can tell I used the bias tape one, so I'll show you how to do that. And I'm not sure why that looks crooked, but anyway. Um, the other thing we did was a three ring binder for her. Um, this is also, this is very, very easy. I added, I went ahead and put the um, sheet protectors in for her. I added a pocket, which we'll talk about too. And so this is all ready for her to take back to school. Um, the one thing that I went ahead and did, I'm not going to be doing this again, but once you figure, once I show you how to cover um, the three ring binder, uh, this is the little uh, date book. So I didn't really do any decorative things on it because I, just with the ribbon on it, I thought it was really pretty. So you can see it's just another spiral bound book. So we're going to go over how to do these. This is a very, very quick and easy project. So this week's tutorial is going to be a lot shorter than last week's. Um, and it's still a lot of fun to do and it'll be something nice for the kids. If you have little boys instead of little girls, um, sort of floral fabric, uh, Aubriana did pick this out by the way. So this was the fabric she chose. So you could do uh, camo, you could do superheroes, uh, their favorite sports team, but just a nice way to kind of protect the binders and notebooks because they are constantly getting thrown into backpacks and you know, they start to you know, come apart on the ends or the covers or the backs rip off. So uh, this is just a really nice way to do kind of keep everything nice and protected. So uh, I'm going to very quickly get everything together. So meet me back here and I'll show you all of the necessities that you need to make this, all the materials that you'll need, and then also just some options of things that you can do to personalize or decorate them. Okay, so be right back. Okay, so here are all the items that you actually need to make this. So you're going to need a tape measure, obviously. You're going to need some pins. Or alternatively, if you prefer, you can use, let me open these up, you can use the gem clips, which sometimes is nice if you're using the bias tape because it gets kind of thick. If you don't have gem clips, but you have office supplies, these work just as good. The other thing that you're going to need is either a pair of pinking shears or a pair of sharp scissors or both. Depends on what you prefer. You're going to need some matching thread. Since this has a lot of white and a lot of different colors, I'm just going to stick with white thread today. Um, the other thing that you're going to need, obviously, is your spiral bound notebook. This notebook is 10 and a half by 8 inches. So you're going to need your notebook. And for that notebook, you're going to need a piece of material that is 32 by 12 inches. Okay? Then, obviously, you're going to need your spiral bound notebook. Um, this one is, does it say? It's just a one inch binder, your standard size. So, you, to cover this, we're going to need a piece of fabric that is cut 42 inches by 14 inches. Plus, since we're going to put a little pocket on the inside, um, I cut my pocket to five by nine inches because um, you have to add, add seam allowance, but you can make your pocket as small or as big as you want. So that's really kind of optional. Now some other things that you can do if you're wanting to really decorate it and personalize it, I went ahead because uh, this set that I'm making is for Aubriana's sister, Alea. So I went ahead and made on my embroidery machine, I went ahead and made some little name pockets that I'm going to sew onto the front. However, if you don't have an embroidery machine or if you do not feel like sitting in hand embroidering, which I understand, 
don't forget they still make fantastic iron on letters so you can uh, personalize the front of your notebooks with your child's name or if you're doing it for a specific class or you know just you know a little motivational phrase if you're one of those lucky people to have a Cricut I'm sure you can make something really awesome now I want to show you how to make one with bias tape so if you have bias tape and you're going to be using that you're going to need the one package this is the uh, extra wide double fold bias tape okay so you'll need a package of that and just in case of accidents a trusty seam ripper because yes this is the one that came with my machine I know a lot of people go oh they're not that good but it works for me um, you will also need something to turn out your corners you've probably seen me use this before this was the brace that came in a pair of shoes uh, but you could use a chopstick you could use the back end of your scissors whatever you want um, and then for other decorative items like if you want to add like some pretty rickrack onto it I, I might add some I'm not sure I haven't decided yet um, if you want to be able to tie the notebook close you know add like some ribbon so they can like put a tie around to tie it close you can do that or for decorative reasons so really uh, you know the sky is the limit you're only limited by your imagination so um, Go gather all of your items and then meet me back here and we'll get started on the first notebook. We're going to do the spiral bound first. Okay. All right. See you in a couple minutes. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our piece of fabric for the spiral bound notebook. Now, if you're going to be doing the bias tape like I am, you can actually cut your fabric down to 11 inches by 32 wide. So first thing we're going to do because we're not going to put bias tape on these edges so the first thing we want to do is we want to get this prepared and we're going to there we go lay out the fabric and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to turn it in a quarter of an inch where are my pins and you're going to pin it in place like this let's get this done one thing great about working about stripes, you can make sure you're going straight by just lining up the stripes on the fabric. So let me get another, one more pin in. Okay. Oops. Missed the fabric. There we go. Okay. So you're going to pin this in place. Actually, this pin is, there we go. So you're going to put in a quarter of an inch seam allowance you're going to or sorry a quarter of inch hem hem you're going to sew that then you're going to do take all the pins out obviously then you're going to do it again you're going to turn it over another quarter of an inch and you're going to sew it again that way you can make sure that any raw edges or fraying that you have is going to be trapped inside and not making a mess so do that to both sides of both ends of your fabric quarter of an inch pin in place sew it then do it again both ends meet me back here and then we'll move to the next step okay so now that you have hemmed your edges the next thing you're going to do is you're going to fold your fabric in half because we want to find the center Hopefully your ends are even. Mine look a little wonky, but that's okay. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. There we go. This is actually a very forgiving kind of craft. So now we know where our center is. I'm going to try to put a little finger press in. It's a little hard to do because I'm using seersucker, which doesn't press out very well. So I can see my center line. I'm going to put a little pin in it so you can see where it is. So that's where my center is. So now take your spiral bound notebook and place it in your center. Okay. So I'm going to remove my pen because I don't want to accidentally forget and leave it in there. Don't want to lay it a stick or self. Okay. So we have that on center. So now what you're going to do, just open up your notebook, make sure that your ends and everything look good. Okay. They are, that side looks good and that side looks good okay so 
Now, before we move on, I'm going to move that and put my pin back in. So now everything looks good. Now what you're going to do, I went ahead and cut my pieces of bias binding. So what you're going to do, and remember this is the extra wide double fold. So that's what you're going to need. So you're going to open it up like this. I want to try to do this so you can see. Just take a little bit, fold it over so you don't have a raw edge, press it with your fingers, and then sandwich it back closed. Just like that. Now for this next part, sometimes it's easier to use clips than pins. I'm going to use clips because I've used my pins so many times, they're really not that sharp anymore. So what you're going to do now is take it like this. And you can see, there we go. So first thing I'm going to do is I want to grab a clip because it's just going to be easier and hold that in place. So now all you're going to do is take that bias tape and sandwich your hem, that top piece of fabric where you cut so that you have some on the front and the other half is on the back. So go ahead and I'm going to put a couple clips in because I don't want to have it shift on me. There we go. And one more. Okay. So now do that all the way across the bottom and then all the way across the top as well. Come back, meet me here, and then we'll continue on. Okay. So now you should have your bias binding all the way across the top and the bottom. So all you're going to do is run a straight stitch all the way on across the top and all the way across the bottom. Now, make sure that where you have your needle position that you're catching both sides of the bias binding because you don't want to have to go back, pick it out, and start over. So when you first start out, just make sure that you're, when your needle goes through and your stitches that it goes through the front and the back. Now, the other thing I went ahead and did, and you can do this either before or after you sew it, was I folded my fabric in half like this, and I found my center point and went ahead and put a pin in. I'm going to leave that there because that will be important on the next step. So go ahead and sew your bias binding all the way on. Now, if you didn't have enough and you're like, I, or you forgot to do the little turnover at the end, don't panic because you can always pull out some fray check to put on it. Or alternatively, you can actually use a little bit of Elmer's glue and just mesh, put it in with your finger and it will keep it from uh, fraying. So no worries if you forgot, no big deal. All right, so sew this up and meet me back here. Okay, so now that you have your bias tape sewn to the top and the bottom, remember I told you earlier to find out where the center of your fabric is and just put a pin in that area. And this is why, because now you're going to take your spiral bound notebook that you purchased and kind of place it in the center. Now take the pin out if you marked it with the pin because you don't want to accidentally leave that in there. I know Le Alea would be very upset if she got stuck. So. Now that you have that, like, you know, I say so a lot. I really need to just stop doing that. So, and there I go again. <laughs> All right, so the next step is going to be, you're going to lay this here. You're going to open up your notebook. And then take, oops, I have a little thread over here. Snip that off. Okay. Now, fold it in just like this. Here we go. If you're not perfectly straight on the inside, don't worry about it. It's fine. It's on the inside. Then grab all your pages, careful to not adjust that other side or to move it. Fold in your other side. Press it down with your hands. There you go. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to pin or clip from here to here and from here to here. And we're going to do the same thing from here to here and from here to here. Now, before we do that, 
Well, actually, what I'm going to do is I am going to grab a couple of clips because we want to kind of test this out. So you can either pin or clip again, either one, because you want this fabric to be, you want it to be snug, but not tight, if that makes any sense. If it's too tight, you're not going to be able to close the notebook without the, um, the cover buckling. So here we go. Let's give this a quick try. There we go. My pages are sticking a little bit. Can you see that? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a little bit of an adjustment because it is also a little bit tight. It's not pulling all the way over, so I must have it just a little bit too tight. So what I'm gonna do, oops, take that clip off, is just push it back about less than a quarter of an inch and then re-clip it. It should be better this time. Yeah, if you see your pages, the pages sticking through, chances are you have it too tight. So let's just turn it over. There we go. That's much nicer. Much, much nicer. Okay. There. Now, go ahead and let's do the clips on the back side too. And just make sure, actually I know for a fact I'm going to need to push mine back just a little bit. There we go. Make sure your bias tape lines up. And then put a couple clips or pins across the top. And two more down here and in the corner. Now, let's see how that closes. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. Okay. Actually, no, the top isn't. Let's just pull you out just a tiny bit. There we go. There we go. The top needed a little bit more of an adjustment. Perfect. We'll adjust the bottom to match. And done. Now, if you're going to do any kind of outside of doing iron-on letters or if you're going to make your own, you know, vinyl iron-on with Cricut. If you're going to do any decorating to the front, you'll want to do it now. So for instance, I have Alea's placket on here with her name. So I'm going to go ahead and pin that because that looks nice and centered. I'm going to go ahead and pin that in place like so because I need to sew it on before. Whoops, I think I just stuck into the notebook. There we go. Yeah, I need to have this on before I sew the top and the bottom together. So I was gonna, I was thinking about maybe adding, I think it would be too busy. So I don't think I'm gonna actually add any of this, but I, you know what I will do though? Not that she needs a bookmark, but I think what I am going to do is I'm just going to take one strip because you could do this with the date book. You could do this um, with the regular notebook and this is all stuck together. Why didn't I do this before? Here we go. A little twi I'm fighting with a twisty tie. So I think what I'm going to do, let me open this up, is measure off a piece leave a little bit of extra at the top and then we want it to like kind of stick out a little bit at the bottom too. So I'm going to cut just a little piece so that when I sew the top in, I'm just going to place it right here. I'm going to sew it in place so that way it gives her a little uh, bookmarker. So now when you, uh, once you finish doing all your decorating and you have everything all together, all you have left to do is sew a straight line from here all the way across to the other side. So let me take the notebook out. It'll be a little easier to see. Got to take it out anyway. There we go. There. Okay. So once you got all the decorating down the outside, all you do is sew a straight line 
all the way across top and bottom and then you'll be done so meet me back here we'll fill in our notebook um, if you're going to add like I said if you want to add like the little bookmark I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to pin that in place right now I need a smaller pin and just going to pin that in place so I don't forget there we go so we're all ready to sew it stitch it together so meet me back here we'll fill it up and then we'll move on to uh, the the differences in uh, how we're going to do the binder all right okay so now we are done we're just going to take our notebook and put it in our sleeve so let's get the do i have it yes i'll make sure i have the everything in the correct place oh look i forgot to snip my threads shame on me and that was because I was one inch from being done and my bobbin ran out. Why does that always happen? So close. All right, so just roll that almost there. There we go. And I have my little bookmarker in there for her so she can always keep track of what she's where she is in her drawing. There we go. Yep, everything's lining up. Another little thread. There we go. So how sweet is that? Now, uh, I do ha I do have to say, Alea is only four, but she always has to have what Sissy has. So I am making this set for her. She loves to draw. So this will be something that she can draw. And she, my mom babysits her, and she is working on learning how to write her name and letters and her number. So this will be her workbook. So this one is done. The next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you how to do the binder. I'm not gonna take you through every tiny little step because there's so many similarities from what we just did to this one. What I'll really do is go over the differences and there's not many. So give me just a second to get set up. Meet me back here. Uh, yeah, go grab all your stuff for your binder. All right, see you in a second. Okay. so. What I'm going to do, what I did was I went ahead and did a little prep work because I didn't want to repeat steps that you already know. Like for instance, on this edge and this edge of the notebook, I turned it in a quarter of an inch twice and hemmed it. Now because my fabric is <laughs> it's really starting to fray, I just did a zigzag stitch all the way around the edge. You don't have to do that, but I... It, if your fabric is fraying a lot, it's a good idea because you know you don't want it to you know eventually start fraying up to where your seam is going to be and it fall apart. So I just ran a wide zigzag stitch all the way across the top and all the way across the bottom, and then like I said, then I just did fold over twice hem. Then I fold it in half and I found my center um, because there's a few things that I need to that we're going to do before we just stitch this together. First thing is I wanted to figure out where I wanted to place my pocket. So I had went ahead and with the pocket, let me pull this side up. I only did one time, fold it over once for a side, across the bottom, and up the other side. Across the top piece, I did fold it over twice because it's going to get a lot of use. People putting stuff in it, you know, them putting stuff in their pockets, taking it out. So go ahead and figure out where you want it placed. And I think that's a good space. So I can go ahead and I've just went ahead and pinned that in place. So you could go ahead and get that done too. Then once you get this in place and you have everything ready, then fold it over. Make sure that it's not, that it's, like I said before, snug, but not tight. This is also the time if you're going to do any decorative items on the front, like I said, I've got a lay as uh, the, you know, the name tag on it. So I went ahead and, and I've placed that. So the first things we're going to do before we assemble this is we're going to sew any decorative items on the front piece. And we're going to go ahead 
and sew in the little pocket that you make. So you're just going to stitch down, obviously, on three sides. So go ahead and do that. Meet me back here. Okay, so now we're getting a lot closer to being done. So the next thing you want to do with your binder, just you want to run a hem. Now whether you choose to roll it over twice and hem it, or just fold it over once and hem it, is completely up to you at this point. Um, so, but you just want to make sure that when you have your hem in, when you've marked it, that you still have a good, that this is still quite a bit outside of the notebook because even once we hem it, we are then going to sew it together all the way across the top and then we're going to fold the sides in. So we're going to want to make sure that we have everything all together. So go ahead, put your hem in, come back, and then we'll move to the next step because we are almost done. Okay, so now we are on the last leg. So once you have your hem across the top and the bottom, what you're gonna do is make sure you lay out your material and you find your center, put your binder on the center mark, fold in your fabric, and this way you can kind of see like where the pocket is, make sure it's where you like it. Make sure that it is nice, it's snug, but not tight. So now all you have to do, just like we did with the spiral bound notebook, is stitch all the way, oops, all the way across the top and all the way across the bottom. Then all you'll do is turn it right side out and put your notebook in. So go ahead and do that and then meet me back here. Hi everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's sew along tutorial on how to cover notebooks uh, and binders for back to school. I wanted to just give you a little little view again of what we made. So for Alea we have the spiral bound notebook that's covered, it has her name on it, she'll love that. And I also, in this one, I added the little piece of Rick Rack so she can use it as a bookmarker. And then you just saw me finish this, her three ring binder. I went ahead and put the little sleeves in it and I will put add some paper in it for draw on. And while I was dodging storms today, because I apologize, this is probably not going to make it out until Thursday. Um, I dodged storms all day long. At one point I had to quit filming altogether because the lightning hit. I, I don't know if you can tell, but I have a wall of windows right here and the lightning struck outside this window and it scared me half to death. So uh, it took a lot longer today because mother nature was just not, um, she's not cooperating. So while I was waiting for the thunderstorm to go away, I had already made the bottom part of this. So I pulled up my little pom pom maker. So I made her a little bookmark. <laughs> not that she reads yet, but she's, she's trying, she's learning. Cause I know, you know, my mom babysits her and she also spends uh, certain days with her uh, with Dee Dee. They don't call her grandma. They call my Aunt Debbie Dee Dee. Um, and as well as her grandma on her dad's side. So everybody kind of works with her. So she's she's going to be ready for school. So she's got a little bookmarker. And then for Abriana, who is heading back to school this upcoming week, she has her binder already with her name on it. Um, hers also has the little pocket on the inside. I went ahead and put in some tabs for her or the sheets for her so she can you know, if she gets notes from the teacher, permission slips, whatever they need signed, she won't lose them. Um, I also did, in case you forgot, I also did her spiral bound notebook cover. Oops, I folded a couple of her pages. So hers is all ready for school. And then also she has the date book so she can keep track of, you know, everything she has going on. Because in addition to school and having to know what her tasks are and stuff, she dances, she does softball. So yeah, she's quite a social butterfly, so date book. And then I also made her, of course, she loves to read. So I am sure she will get plenty of use out of her her little um, her bookmark. I'll probably do like a, um, a tutorial one day on how to make these. They're so simple. They're really cute. They're, it's a nice little gift to include for someone. So thank you for stopping by today, and, and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. You know, 
these are great for back to school, but they're also, they, make, they can make great gifts. If you know someone who loves to journal, uh, so you can cover the journal and decorate it really pretty. Or if you want to make a nice gift for someone, if you know someone that's getting married or maybe they're getting their first new house or, you know, their first apartment, you know, cover one of the binders and include, uh, have everyone in the family uh, type up a family recipe, their favorite family recipe, and then put it in the binder and give it to them as a gift. So, so many options, so many great ideas that you can use this for. And I'm sorry if you can hear Mo, there's another storm coming. He He's not a happy boy today. So, thank you guys for stopping by. Please take a moment to like the video and also be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of the other videos that I'll be posting. Thank you so much, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.